graph using slope and intercept. So we have equations for straight lines and a very useful form for that equation is going to be the slope intercept form and it's written y equals mx plus b and we see that quite often and we like it because the m is our slope and it says that right here the m is the slope and then the b is the y-intercept. So if we know the slope and the y-intercept, we can, we can get to our, or the b gives you the y-intercept. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Um, and if we know the b, we can find our y-intercept, which is a point on our graph, and then we can use our slope to find two other points, and then we can graph our line. So let's see, the y-intercept comes from putting the, the b into an ordered pair where the b is the y part and the 0 is in the x part. Okay, so lines written in slope-intercept form are quick and easy to graph and they're easy to extract information from, like what is the slope and what is the y-intercept. So for these problems are examples, we want to first identify the y-intercept and plot it. Then we want to use the slope like we did in the um, what was it called? Like we did in the plotting rise over run video and find two, two more points for our line. And then the third step, we want to connect the dots and make it into a line. So let's see what that looks like. So my equation is y equals 4x minus 1. So I think about y equals mx plus b. And if I just look straight above, it has to be solved for y, and this one is, so it says y equals there, and my m is just that 4. Do you see how that comes straight from the equation above? So my m equals 4, and my b is this whole thing. I have to take the sign with it. My b is a negative 1. Now since I know what the b is, I can do part a and find the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is going to be 0 comma b, and in this case it's 0 comma negative 1. So I know what the ordered pair is, so now I can go plot it. So it's 0 in the x direction and negative 1, so I have to go down for the y direction. Now, so since I have my, my first point on the graph, now I can use my slope to find two more points. So the first thing I have to do is look at the slope, and I'm going to change colors so we can see what I've done just thinking about the slope. So my slope is 4, and I really want to show it as a fraction because I know slope should be rise over run. And since it's a 4, all I can do is change it to a fraction by putting it over 1. So I have 4 over 1, so that's my rise and my run. Uh, so a rise of 4, a run of 1. Now remember I need to look at it one other way, and that's by multiplying the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by a negative 1. So it's going to look like this, 4 over 1 times negative 1 over itself. Remember this is a form of 1, and that's why it's legal to multiply and so I have 4 times negative 1, which will give me negative 4. 1 times negative 1 will give me negative 1. So I have one other way of looking at my slope. So starting at my, here on my graph, at the, the y-intercept that I already plotted, I want to use the rise of 4, that first one, 1, 2, 3, 4, and a run of a positive 1, so it's going to put me right there. Now come back and I want to use my second form of my slope, which is a negative 4 over negative 1. Come back to the original point, I need to do a rise of negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. A negative means I have to go down, and then a run of negative 1, so I have to go to the left, 1. And there are my three points, so I've taken care of part B. So I plotted two more points based on the initial y-intercept. Now I just want to take and draw a line here, and it's a very steep line I can see. 
and you can use a ruler if you have it, your ID card, whatever you've got, side of your calculator, side of your cell phone. And there's the line. Now notice I have an arrow on each end of the line because the line goes on and on in both directions. Number two, y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 3. So I want to start off by figuring out what is my slope and what is my y-intercept. So I'm thinking about it y equals mx plus b in that form and then I can see that my m is a negative 5 fourths and I want to think about that in two different ways. Remember, I can put the negative in the numerator or I can put it in the denominator and it's the exact same thing as what I have here. So I'll have negative 5 over 4, that's one form, and the other form is 5 over negative 4. So that's my second form of my slope. So I have two forms of my slope and then my b is a positive 3 which means that my y-intercept is going to be 0 comma positive 3. So when I plot that one, I go on the x-axis 0 in that direction and just down 1, 2, 3, and there's my y-intercept. So that's going to be the first point on my line. I'll change colors here and let's look at the first form of the slope here. Remember that's a rise over run. So from the original point, negative 5 for the rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a positive 4 for the run, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my second point on the line. We'll change here to blue. Look at the third or the second form of my slope which is 5 over negative 4, come back to the original point and I want to use 5 for the rise, so positive 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that means I'm going up, and a negative 4 for the run, so I have to go to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now since I looked away, I'm going to double count that, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, beautiful. And there's my line. Now, I, I do want to point out that you need to have arrows on the ends of your lines because they indicate that the line goes on and on. And when we have an equation, we are talking about every single dot that you could possibly make in the direction that these three, line, three um, points are indicating.